Our guest on This is America and the World is Francisco Borja. He's ambassador from the Republic of Ecuador to the United States, former Minister of Culture and Heritage for Ecuador, and a former newspaper and television journalist, editor, reporter, and presenter. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Let me uh, talk about the Pope's visit to your country. Very, very important. How is it that the Pope and the Vatican chose Ecuador first? <laughs> well, it was very impressive. The visit was very impressive. I don't know exactly why the Pope chose. <laughs> Perhaps you can go to the <laughs> Vatican to ask him. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> but probably because he's very well, very much concerned about uh, minorities, Indian people, poorest people. Mm -hmm. So perhaps that's why I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he thought that uh, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Paraguay are three emblematic countries with great indigenous people mm -hmm. and ancient civilizations of Indian people. So I think that was the main reason by why he chose Ecuador, uh -huh. Bolivia, and Paraguay. What, uh, what reports are you getting from back home from various quarters? Well, first of all was a great uh, people's mobilization. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. in the streets uh, and the Pope's mass receiving the Pope. Mm -hmm. well, uh, people uh, were very happy, uh, proud yes. of uh, receiving such visit. And, uh, of course, uh, about 80% of our people are Catholics, mm -hmm. so they were very well uh, happy about to uh, have the Pope in, in our territory. Uh, the, uh, the, not only the 80% figure that you mentioned, but I gathered that a third of all of the world's Catholics are in South America, Latin America. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, South America is Catholic continent. Definitely. Mm. Short-term effects and long-term. Will it have a long-term effect, his visit? Well, I think uh, uh, Pope uh, give a lot of values and principles that are very important for us. Mm -hmm. He was talking about uh, inclusive, inclusion of poorest people. We has to he was talking about uh, or against society, consumism, consumers, mm -hmm. consumer societies. Mm -hmm. He was criticized the war economic system based mostly in money and consume. Mm -hmm. And he was talking more that we have to take care of the people, yeah. of our relationship with the others, solidarity and things like that. So I think those things are quite clear now in the mind of uh, our people more than they were before mm. after the visit of the Pope. Your uh, background is journalism. Yes. A print reporter, editor, television reporter, presenter. 30 years on the job. <laughs> so you know you know this. <laughs> yes, huh? certainly. Um, so let's put the Pope uh, over here for a second. If you were going to do a story about Ecuador now, what would the headline be, and what should we know? Perhaps the headline I will put is uh, Ecuador has changed mm -hmm. for good, and I will say forever, perhaps. Uh -huh. From a society, exclusive society only for elites and few people, to an inclusive society for most of the people. Uh -huh. Opportu with opportunities with most of our citizens. Mm -hmm. So Ecuador has changed. That's, uh, that's the, the, the thing everybody that goes to Ecuador in these days are very surprised how the country is changing in infrastructure, uh -huh. in the better opportunities, health, educational opportunities for people, in the business, a middle class that is growing consistently. Those are the main changes I, I can say. So definitely is, is a change. Of course, there could be somebody that doesn't like those changes. There are some people that doesn't like those changes inside the country and outside the country. 
But the country has changed, that's for sure. That's the headline. That's the headline. Ecuador Let, has changed. Uh, let's take a little break. Okay. Uh, we are talking with the ambassador from the Republic of Ecuador. Uh, I've been getting a little briefing on his name, and it's Ambassador Francisco Boja. That's it? Is that simple? Yes. That's simple. That's simple. But we also said Short Francisco Jose Boja Saveos. Uh, that's my complete name. My two names and my father and my mother's family's names. We're going to take a little break. Back on the other side, This is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services. Mr. Ambassador, you talk about the change uh, in Ecuador. I'm fascinated on this phrase that I've come across uh, called good living. Good living. Uh, and in our, in my mind, I would apply that to kind of well-being or quality of life. What does it mean in Ecuador, this phrase, good living? It means something uh, that you are thinking about. But the, th the, th the thing is that we realize that the uh, world is only concerned about growth. Mm -hmm. Gross domestic product, gross domestic product per capita. Mm -hmm. And people live too fast, have no time for nothing mm -hmm. else than producing, making money, mm -hmm. and, and, and try to buy more things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More houses, more cars, more helicopters, <laughs> more beach houses, etc., etc. So we finally set up a, a moment and, and think about what's the purpose of living? having a lot of things, having hundreds of houses, cars, airplanes, no. Perhaps it's, it's different, it's another. And we went to the indigenous philosophy and they have a different view of good living. It has to do with, of course, with growth and with economic uh, support for the family and the people. Of course, we need money or the good living too, but not only money. Mm -hmm. We need to have a good relationship with our neighbors, with our family. We have to have the right of an uh, environment free of pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, free, uh, good living is to have good education, free education for poor people that give them opportunities. Mm -hmm. Good and free health for people. You, uh, All those things are what we think is part of the good living, mm. not only economical growth, not only money, not only material uh, goods, but also a spiritual and, and, and friendship and solidarity and all those things that I'm talking about. I was uh, struck in my reading about how wonderfully biodiverse the country is with plants and animals and birds and it is and then all of a sudden I'm reading that in the Constitution, it's talking about the rights of nature in the Constitution. It's the, it's the, perhaps it's the first. I, I think there are a few constitutions now that have the right, perhaps Bolivia, I'm not so sure. Uh -huh. I think Bolivia is, uh, has also in, in his, have also in his Constitution the natural rights. It's the, the thing is, we are very concerned about what everybody's concerned, the global 
warm. I don't know how to say it. Global warming. Global yes. warming. Yes. And uh, this is changing you know, weather all around the world. Mm -hmm. And so we think that we have to use the nature, but in an intelligent and properly way. Mm -hmm. uh, not destroying nature, using what nature has to give us, but mm -hmm. not destroying the nature. And uh, therefore, there are some principles and laws that uh, make some regulations about how we are going to uh, extract our oil or mines or things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the rights of nature are in that direction, to use uh, natural resources but properly, not abuse of them. Uh, off the coast of your country uh, is uh, uh, Galapagos, Galapagos Islands. And that's kind of a laboratory unto itself, isn't it, for conservation? And, yes. and running some dangers there, too. Yes, huh? well, uh, you know, Galapagos is the one is a heritage of humanity declared by UNESCO yes. years ago. It's a unique place in the world. Uh, we are making a lot of efforts. Ecuador has made a lot of efforts since many years ago to preserve this uh, natural park uh, as best as possible. We have regulated the visitors, the number of visitors, the path where visitors can uh, travel around, mm -hmm. walk around. Ah, uh, yes. They cannot go anywhere mm -hmm. or everywhere, or they, uh, there are strict regulations that uh, limit the people from who inside the islands. There are more than 20 islands altogether. There mm -hmm. are only three or four with human beings living there. Mm -hmm. The rest of the islands are only uh, with plants and animals. Do we learn from uh, the dangers there, though? I mean, because it is endangered, isn't it? It is, but we are making all what is necessary to do to preserve that uh, in the perfect way. You mentioned the, uh, the oil and the economy of, uh, of, uh, of Ecuador seems to be uh, uh, changing somewhat between the coastal areas, the highlands, the jungle areas, the islands. Talk a little bit about the economy. Well, first of all, uh, I will say that Ecuador is uh, not only a great biodiverse country, but only also a diverse cultural in a geographically diverse mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. We have four different regions. Mm -hmm. Galapagos is one of them. It's the other one is the coast, mm -hmm. where we have a beautiful beaches, mm -hmm. like the Caribbean beaches with warm water, beautiful beaches. We have the highlands, mm -hmm. like uh, Peru or Bolivia, mm -hmm. with the uh, ancient indigenous civilizations, many groups of different groups of Indians in the highlands. And then we have the Amazon, mm -hmm. the rainforest, where we have the oil drilling ah, uh -huh. in, the, in the Amazon. But the Amazon also is very special for tourism. We have already a lot of resorts running by the local people, mm -hmm. by the indigenous mm -hmm. of the Amazonia. Mm -hmm. Beautiful resorts, uh -huh. five-star resorts, four-stars, one-star resorts. <laughs> For all, something for, for every pocket. For every book, pocket, right? yes. <laughs> uh, in, in the in the highlands, we mainly produce uh, for uh, internal consume, fruits okay. and vegetables, mm -hmm. corn, potatoes, things like that. But also, we have a couple of export products like the roses, the most beautiful roses in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, some vegetables like asparagus and, and some others. Uh -huh. But the, mainly, the highlands are for internal consume. Uh -huh. more than for export. Okay. We export more from the coast than when we have the shrimps, we buy oh, shrimps in sure. the world also. Mm -hmm. We have the best cocoa in the world, uh -huh. fine flavor cocoa. We are number one producer of fine flavor cocoa. Every good chocolate has to have at least a portion of this Ecuadorian cocoa, uh -huh. Uh -huh. fine flavor cocoa. Uh -huh. we have coffee, banana, and uh, some, other, uh, some other products, uh, f tropical fruits. So each so, area is contributing. So, yes, each area is contributing. But we are uh, 
the oil has been last year's the most important mm -hmm. uh, export product of our country. Mm -hmm. and we are thinking that in a few years, 10, 20, 30 years, perhaps when oil is finished, we have to have a different productive matrix. Mm -hmm. So we are working hard on that, uh -huh. very hard. I'm interested uh, to talk a little bit about your president uh, because the three previous presidents didn't even finish their terms. Yes, now, the president is a, a Correa, comes along, Rafael Correa comes along, and he's been reelected three times, three times, three terms, it's three terms. Um, what are his successes and his challenges right now? Well, his successes are, as I told you before, the high headline mm -hmm. to change the country. Okay. You cannot understand what is happening right now in Ecuador if you don't see what you have mentioned. Three presidents cannot finish their terms mm -hmm. because of the people protesting in the, in the streets were so many yep. and so angry that were, they, they have to they, they throw away the, the government, overthrow the governments. Yep. So if you don't see what, what happens the last 10, 12 years, you don't understand what is happening now. So uh -huh. people were fed up of all these, of all politicians, uh -huh. of institutions of the congressmen, of the Congress, uh -huh. even the media and the church uh, and the for armed forces were complained by people. And the people protest, The don't people they? protest. They do, they do. It's hundreds of thousands of people in the streets day by day. Mm -hmm. So uh, Correa thought that it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. Our countries, not only Ecuador, but South America is the most inequality continent in the world, mm -hmm. where the gap between the richest people and the poorest yes. is so big that it's necessary to make some change. Mm -hmm. And he uh, do two, two great things. One, he start to pick up taxes from the people, not mm -hmm. raising taxes, but collecting taxes properly and honestly. So he multiplied by two and three tax collection in Ecuador in the last eight years. And also we have a new, uh, new oil contracts that gives uh, Ecuador more uh, income uh, for his oil than before. Mm -hmm. So with that money, we invest in new schools, uh -huh. great quality schools for poorest people, free education for everybody. We build more hospitals and good hospitals for people also free of charge. But the president is also controversial, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it is. And there's protests going on now. Yes, it is. Tax policies and such. Yes, it is a controversial personality. He is He's a very controversial personality, confrontational. He, also. he rules uh, tough, huh? Yes, but uh, most of the people likes that, likes the way he is doing. Uh -huh. He still have about sixty-five percent in the pools of uh, support from the people. He used to have seventy-five, eighty percent before. Uh -huh. That's unusual in Ecuador, as you say. The last three presidents, when they were overthrown, they have about ten percent of support. I want to ask you about a couple of things so we don't get too far away. Uh, but I love these things about your country. Mandatory voting. Oh, yes. If you're uh, between, what, 16 and 65, you must vote. Something like that? No, from uh, 18. 18. From 16 is, uh, is not mandatory. Okay. 16 to 18, you can vote or not. Ah, okay. Or, and also, after 65, yeah. the older people, yeah. elder people, yeah. They can decide if they vote or not. But from 21 to 65, it's mandatory vote. Uh, referendums. They have national referendums on different things. Yes, we, you, I like we, that. we had uh, some in, in, the, in the last years. Uh, Give me one example, just one, one referendum that would be had. Well, the Constitution was approved by a referendum. Ah. The, yes, after the Assembly... Uh, rights yeah. 
wrote then the constitution, then it's put out for the referendum. We put it to referendum. Okay. How about an ombudsman? And the country has an ombudsman, which... What, what's an ombudsman? Uh, just uh, someone who can be critical of the... Uh, uh, just taking an opposing point of view, uh, or else just calling attention to something that might be a uh, questionable practice, huh? So they have that. Ombudsman? Yeah. Ombudsman. Oh, the yeah. ombudsman. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, you we, say. We, we don't call, have that. <laughs> we call the defender, of, uh, defender people's defender. Ah, people's defender, yeah. sure. Yes, of course. We should have one of those. That's important. I yes. don't think we. Now, you're a journalist. I'm kind of an interviewer. I don't say journalist, but I say interviewer. Um, freedom of the press. It's different there, huh? It's a little tougher than it is here, huh? Well. Well, come on. <laughs> I, I will say something. You can say anything in Ecuador. If you open the papers every day, you can. Of course, that's that's why I'm a little bit uh, surprised that uh, some people say there is no freedom of expression in Ecuador. Uh huh. Is is you can open el comercio, el universo, el, te el telégrafo, expreso, fifty newspapers. Uh huh. Only one is public. Forty nine. Are private and most of them speak. Can they criticize the government? Of course, if oh, they can. Yes. And a journalist and respected? they do. Uh, and, and they, they do. do. They respect it, the journalists. Yes. Sometimes the government criticizes the media. That's ah. a different. Uh huh. <laughs> I think we have that here too. And I think it's it's fair. Uh huh. Because I don't think we we are as a journalist we have privilege that. Any, any other people doesn't have. Right. We have to be criticized also. And we Our have a job has to mm -hmm. be criticized. Mm -hmm. So that's perhaps what some people uh, makes makes some people think that there are Good. no freedom of expression in Ecuador because they look the president or a minister mm -hmm. criticizing some journalists or some media. But that's uh, once in a while. And it's not all the time, it's once in a while. But the media still say whatever they want. Relationship. Really. Thank you. Relationship. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, relationship between Ecuador and the United States. How is that? It's very good. Yeah. We, and we common interests? What are the common? Well, we have values and principles. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, uh, fight against terrorism, uh, human rights, uh, trade. Immigration. There are some topics we are we are, we agree uh, strongly. There are some other topics we not agree always, in, especially in international issues. But we are we disagree friendly and frankly and sincerely. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, the U.S. is our most important market. Uh -huh. M more or less, forty percent of our export goods are coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Even we don't have a free trade uh, treaty, mm -hmm. but our commerce is very strong. Eighteen uh, billion dollars is altogether the commerce between Ecuador and the United States. So for us, it's a great uh, importance to have uh, the best relation we can, and I'm committed to that to improve as more possible our relationship with the U.S. What do you see as your uh, number one mission? I think uh, commerce. Commerce? Trade. Trade and inbe investment. Uh -huh. I would say both of those. Uh -huh. of, course, of course, political dialogue is important, of, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me uh, the main issues are those. Mm -hmm. Trade and investment. Of course, we have also a, a lot of Ecuadorians living in mm -hmm. in uh, U.S. and we have a increasing the number of U.S. citizens that are going to live in Ecuador uh -huh. because Ecuador is top country for retired people mm. because of many things because of good living, because of uh, not expensive goods, because of good atmosphere, nice places, beaches, different. Uh, atmospheres, different environment. So that's also important. We are promoting a lot our tourists to Ecuador 
and uh, the people to uh, retire people to settle down in our country. But finally, the headlines of my most important mission is investment and trade. We're at the end of our time, Mr. Ambassador. I wish you a happy National Day upcoming, and we thank you for visiting This Is America and the World. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Tourism Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Panama Tourism Authority. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings and Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing, and distribution services.